So one of the big things that I think we made progress on in the country over the last, you know, five or six decades is just the fact that we put a lot of physical infrastructure in place, whether at the school level or the college level. Over the last decade or so, there's been a growing need for us to figure out ways to improve the quality of the education that goes there. One way to do that is to actually have people and better teachers in classrooms, etc. The other way, which is what we're seeing an increasing uptake on, is just the use of technology. So how do you, for instance, for new topics, have ways in which you can either use MOOCs or virtual classrooms, etc. to enable students to learn from that and then come into the class and discuss it. So you're not dependent on every teacher becoming an expert in that topic. The fact that we do have a challenge in that we need a workforce that's digitally skilled, that is um, able to uh, uh, have a lot of soft skills in addition to technology skills that can learn and relearn um, continuously and uh, continue to keep themselves uh, relevant in terms of their skills. And uh, certainly uh, one of the things that we as a company are looking at is investing our CSR funds in such a way to build up the ecosystem that will create for us and uh, uh, the entire industry the workforce of the future. And we're doing that through various things like STEM education at, uh, by uh, uh, by focusing on underserved communities, women, uh, poor, poorer parts of the society and helping them to get interested in technology and uh, developing technology skills uh, as well as partnering with universities uh, to fund scholarships and, and, uh, and various other methods to encourage uh, uh, the underserved parts of the community to, uh, to become employable, to build up skills that can then be of benefit to all of us in industry in the future. Future skills is about future-proofing employability. The country is faced with a challenge as well as an opportunity. We clearly have an abundance of talent, a demographic dividend, but clearly making use of that by future-skilling our workforce, making them industry-ready and ensuring that that pool of knowledge is applied in a meaningful way to create performance is extremely important. Our panel discussion deliberated on the opportunity, the challenges, the role the government, industry, academia and NGOs have to play in helping us bridge the skill deficit and skill gap that exists today. You know, technology is, is a great enabler for creating access, uh, making education more affordable, um, ensuring speed and scale as far as education is concerned because imparting of knowledge is now uh, readily available uh, through technology as a medium. It brings down the price point in many ways. It's disrupted uh, the way knowledge is created and consumed uh, for us. So uh, what we're seeing uh, more and more is that government is wanting to move on to digital platforms in terms of understanding, in terms of learning, in terms of disseminating information. For example, the Election Commission is talking about how do you interact with children and the future voters of the country on making them understand what are the uh, their fundamental rights responsibilities etc as a citizen and how do you use the digital media to educate such uh, children the other one that uh, for instance we've just uh, eva has done is the kumbh mela where we implemented the entire digital media strategy and the digital presence of uh, tourists uh, and the other presence also through digital means and technology. So obviously digital is the future. So the challenge is how do you ch educate children, how do you educate the next generation of employ employment and employees to learn those skills. I, Eva I did a report in uh, 2017 where we are saying that if we were to map employment across the country and across the nature of jobs, 9% of our people will start working in jobs which do not exist today. 37% of people will be working in jobs which require further reskilling. And 54% of jobs will be probably in areas which can go on as usual. Now let's look at the 37%. Uh, and let me take the example for instance of a Zomato delivery boy. Now that's something that we all understand. We all have some touch point with this Zomato delivery boy. But I don't think the Zomato delivery boy wants to be a Zomato delivery boy for the rest of his life. His average age right now is between 20 to 25 years. He wants to move on. 
and we want to and the government has introduced programs like startup india digital india make in india and what stops that boy from actually and his aspirations are to own his own business someday but what does he require for that he needs to know how to get onto a digital platform he needs to know how to build a digital platform he needs to know how to participate in a digital platform he needs to know what kind of skills are required to become an entrepreneur so that continuous learning that must happen in anybody's life so this was the example of zomato but you take the example of any employee in whether it's in your careers or anywhere else that is the critical part which will define how well we do in our future technology is moving at such a fast pace that i don't know whether the technology that i know today is going to even exist 2 years from now so if i don't upskill myself if i don't uh, learn continuously of what's happening around me and quickly gather information as well as quickly gather formal learning also around it but shorter quicker bursts of learning is what is required in uh, the new way is if i don't do this i'm absolutely obsolete and redundant in a few years from now so it's really up to each one of us that whether we decide to live in an obsolete world or whether we uh, want to you know stay up with the times so even as a consumer as a user as a employee every way will demand that we need to be up, uh, updated with the newer skills for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel